Okay, this is Jacob Schmidt with DeerHuntingSchool.com. This video here is for uh, someone that had uh, got me to do a video for them on YouTube. Uh, put it on YouTube so they can uh, see it. Um, this property here, just for people that's looking on YouTube so they kind of know just a little bit about this, is a uh, properties in, so in the southern region, so the ruts uh, lighter than usual. Um, this is a pine tree uh, farm area. Uh, you may look at it and it look, may look like some agriculture, but it's really not. Um, so, you know, just saying that. So if you are watching, if other people's watch this on YouTube, they may be able to um, see what the heck I'm talking about a little bit. But uh, Tim, uh, the videos for Tim, I appreciate it. Um, let me do this video for you. And first off, um, I'm just going to kind of talk about the the three stand locations that you showed, or I guess one of them was a blind and two of them stand locations. Um, they look pretty good to me, and I'll tell you why I think they look decent, and then I'll kind of go into some other stuff. But <clears throat> first of all, this, fir this first one here, you got somewhere right in this area. Um, I liked it because when I first looked at it, I first thing come to me was this edge here um, deer like to walk down the edges of these clear cuts a lot even they'll be out in these clear cuts feeding a lot um, wherever um, and they uh, and then they'll kind of gravitate to the edge and a lot of times they'll fall the the edge of the tree line down um, and on their way to wherever so that one you know you'd said even said it was kind of close to the road but um, to me I kind of like that um, that's location for that reason there you got that edge feature um, and plus you have this edge feature here and that just sort of creates a funnel um, not as much as some other funnels but it does as far as uh, the path least resistance um, these areas here do um, the deer you know they kind of just follow them kind of like when we're walking through the woods and stuff um, a lot of times it's easier to walk down the edge of a tree line or something like that um, because you know it's easier to find your way um, and a lot of times it's easier to kind of navigate especially that this here being on that southern this tree line being on that south um, part of this clear cut here um, the the these bigger trees will shade this area right along that deal and the growth won't be quite as mu as bad so it'll be a little bit easier walking compared to on the north side, uh, which I know this is a road, but on this north side, that stuff grows up a lot faster because the sun rays are actually penetrating it all day long. That's in the full sun to where this is this tree line here is shaded out a little bit. So it's a little easier walking there. So I kind of like that, that stand there um, or that blind location for them, them couple reasons there. And then this one here that you had up in, in this area right in here somewhere, I liked it as well because of the edge feature here. Um, and one thing about that edge feature there, and I know this is off the area that you hunt, um, is that say deer, you know, here, if they're wanting to walk that edge, and that's kind of the same thing that's kind of on that, that southerly part where these bigger trees will kind of shade that edge as them deer will walk that edge a lot, you know, and they may come out into here and stuff, but let me erase this real quick and I'll just kind of show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> that's that outside point like that kind of creates a funnel um, for deer that, that may be walking, um, let me move my map a little so I can see it better. Uh, deer that may be walking, um, let's just say a deer's in here feeding, because that's what's going to go on a lot out in these areas. Um, a lot of that undergrowth is at that, it's that younger undergrowth, because this here, I believe that they cut this um, in between, real quick, let me go, I believe they cut that in between. They thin this in between 2008 and 2010, somewhere in that that time frame. Let me make sure this was a. Okay, this was 2008, and this picture here is in 2009. So they cut it somewhere in that in between there. They they thin this. Um. So you should have 
pretty good undergrowth where the deer can actually get to it and feed. Um, so you're going to have a lot of deer feeding wherever um, out in these areas. Now, I know you can't hunt over here, but you're still going to have deer feeding, you know, wherever. Um, and let's just say it gets daylight. Well, these deer are going to kind of take a route. And let's just, you know, if them deer were headed over in this area, you know, they kind of walk down. Unless they just want to walk through this area, a lot of times you'll have deer come and they'll hit that edge. And they'll come around that edge, you know. And that kind of creates somewhat of a funnel there, that outside corner does, which is not as good as a funnel as say, hey, this was a, a river that was, you know, flowing um, that would make the deer difficult to cross, um, or if that was the edge of a mountain um, where it was really hard to steep to, to, to climb or something like that. Um, but it still does create it somewhat of a funnel. So I do like that, that stand location in that area. Um, and then you had one here, and the the only thing I could see on that that really stood out was this road. A lot of times deer will walk up and down them, them old logging roads and stuff, um, getting from, from, you know, as they may come out here and they may walk down the road a little ways and then cut down through here or, or whatever. You know, you got kind of got that idea. So that, that, that area there. But... I had looked, um, I'm going to change color pins here, a little bit more finer, um, let tell, let's go with a, uh, let's just go with a yellow. I'm going to change a little bit finer point pin, um, because I looked and, and there were some areas, several locations that to me were interesting. Um, one is this area right here. Um, I'm interested in that because you have this tree line here that comes down, which is creating an edge feature. Anytime I look at aerial photos, um, I'll look, at, look for that. I look for them edge, edge features. And you have that same edge feature here, and they merge together. And that gives you diversity of, of habitat, and that's what you're looking at. That's what you really, to find uh, high areas that deer use a lot, a lot of times you, you, you want to find that diversified habitat, and you'll find that where multiple edge areas come together. Um, and you see that here in this area right here. Okay. And then you see that um, here. Or kind of where you had that sand, you have an edge feature here and a edge feature here. There's two different habitats kind of colliding together. But another area you see it is where you had this stand here. Okay, you have this edge feature here. You have the edge of the road. You have this across the street. And you have this edge of this clear cut. Which I know that's the edge of the road. Um, but, you know, deer will cross them roads no problem. Okay. And another area... Anywhere around these edges kind of catches my attention. Then here's an edge, and it bumps up here. That's diversified habitat, okay? And then you've got the same spot right here. You've got three different types of habitat in one area. Okay, you've got the edge of this, you've got the edge of this, and you've got the edge of this. Now, I know you said some of this was swampy. Um, really swampy, and I think this area down in here is, and probably this area back in here is, from what, what I was understanding by reading your email. Okay. Um, but them are areas that I really would like to check out if it was for me. I think you probably possibly have a more, another stand location in this area, somewhere right in here. Um, here, somewhere right in this area. Because of the, the difference, the edge, there's, there's, this area here has three edge features. You have an edge feature coming off of this area, coming off of this area, and coming off of this area. And also, the edge of the swampy area you're talking about is another edge feature. Okay, so there could be four edge features 
somewhere right in this 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 vicinity okay and it could be the same thing here you may have four edge features here because you have one edge feature here two here three here and you may have an edge of a swampy okay so there's possibly there's three or four edge features here where you have diversified habitat okay and then here you know this area you have one two three three for sure and if you have any kind of a swampy area you've got that uh, edge feature there okay uh, terrain and not to mention this one here really because you have the let me erase all this um, you have the this area here we're talking about um, you have this edge feature this edge feature you have this edge feature and then also you have the road that comes right through that area so that's creating for sure four when you start getting a lot of, of, of edge features coming together like that them are, a lot of times are are good spots for deer um, now I had mentioned earlier that you know you kind of just giving people brief so if they're just in case they happen to watch this video they kind of understand what's what the heck I'm talking about a little bit but um, I talked about the rut being uh, later your rut should be uh, later than most places and probably more extended you know which I mean by that a longer period of a rut the northern rut is kind of a compacted um, but the southern rut a lot of times is a more extended rut so the, the you have a more extended time frame to hunt these things and other I want to talk about other areas if I were just coming in scouting it then would be the areas I want to look at this area this area this area okay and I'll always I'm um, scout these edges all the edges I want to walk all my edges okay that would put me actually let me just do this and then I'm going to talk about the rut for a second. I know I kind of went in it, but I, I don't want to forget this point um, here. Okay, I'm going to. Okay, so I want to look at these, all these, where all these come together, where I have multiple uh, uh, or diversified uh, features, okay, which is here, here, um, this area, which I talked about. There's one here. Okay, them are my uh, more diversified, where I have multiple different types of habitat that come together in one location. Them are all them. Okay, now anytime I do, them are areas that I'm going to mark that I want to look at for sure. I want to walk in them areas, which I know you already have a stand here, you have a stand here, and you have a, some type of a stand here. Okay. Now I'm gonna switch colors. Oh, what did I just do? Um, let me go to. Uh, we're just gonna go to paint now. Also, I want to walk all of my edges. So I want to check out this entire edge here, here. There's an edge feature. I know some of this may be swampy, so you may not be able to actually check it out. But here, oh, that's another spot right here. I don't know where exactly your boundary is. I know that you have a boundary in, in, of your hunting spot, and this is the spot you picked. But, um, just a second. Oh, doggone it. What am I doing? Here we go. This area right here has multiple... Uh, habitats coming in one spot now that's the very back of your property uh, or the area that you can hunt but I want to I would want to check that out okay now um, I'm gonna go back to the edges I want to walk all these edges okay the road makes an edge that there makes an edge where you have this stand all this is edges that you, you want to walk okay that road creates edge 
I want to walk the actual road, or at least drive down it real slow. Um, you'll see where deer cross in there and stuff. This creates an edge feature here. I want to walk all of that. I think that's included all of them. A lot of times you're going to have scrapes and stuff pop up on them edge features, um, on them edges, things like that. And any on the, also the edge of the swamp, which I, I don't know exactly where it is um, here, but wherever the edge of the swamp is, I want to walk the edge of the swamp, okay? So you want to walk the edge of the swamp and we're going to talk about the rut in just a second you want to walk the edge of the swamp okay you want to walk the edge of it okay so you want to walk the edge of that swamp areas that's on here you want to walk all these edges you want to look at that and the reason is you know these areas out here don't really interest me as far as the hunting aspect now, obviously, if I have a rifle and there's an area out here where I can, sh you know, say I could set a stand up here um, and I could shoot 200 yards this direction, 200 yards this direction, 100 yards this direction, and 150 yards this direction, obviously that spot would interest me because I can cover so much area with a gun. But when you're actually trying to find... Um, We're actually trying to find congregated deer movement and where deer are coming through an area. Now, if you're talking about bucks, okay, the reason these all these edge feature, all these edges and this, this diversified habitat coming together in one spot interests me is because a lot of times you're going to have a lot of deer traffic through them areas, okay? And anytime you have a lot of deer traffic in an area, uh, you may even let's just say doe traffic okay when you have a lot of deer traffic you're gonna have a lot of doe traffic okay so when you have a lot of doe traffic it during the rut in the seeking phase and the chasing phase and the breeding phase you're gonna have a lot more buck traffic in the areas now the problem that may get you on these really uh, let's say these edges Okay, say this edge right here is a buck a lot of times will, he will scent check this area from the edge on the downwind side. Okay, and he'll do it, you know, a lot of times on the edge. He'll just kind of scent check, boom, he may hit this road, come over here, and as he's, and let's just say we, this particular, and okay, the, the, this is north. Okay, so obviously this is east, and this is west, and then uh, south is here. Okay, so what happens, we're just going to say we have a southwesterly wind, just for the heck of it. Okay, so the buck, let me switch colors for his route too. Um, I'm just going to use red. Okay, so the buck, let's just say he comes out of here, and he comes up. And he's coming in this area he can scent check all of this by walking that area he can head like this and in all reality he then he sent he can scent check these areas if this is visual enough he can see through it he can actually uh, visually check some of the areas he can head up here boom he can scent check this area he may head something like that however i mean he may go from there to to here, I mean, he's got a lot, and then he can scent check this area as the wind's blowing, something like that. He could come up here on this edge, and then he's scent checking this area. And that's what happens a lot of times, because what happens a lot of times, you'll have deer, does, bed on these edges, and they'll feed on these edges. He's not only scent checking the actual deer but then he can actually scent check trails that these does may be taking in and out of these areas okay and then boom he may follow a doe but what happens is you, when you get a lot of bucks cruising the area uh, looking for does you have multiple bucks doing this you have multiple bucks coming downwind of the bedding area you have multiple bucks coming downwind of the feeding feeding area a lot of times what happens with people that especially that hunt um, 
edge features, say an edge of a field, what happens to them a lot of times, um, we're just going to say this is a this is a field, and the reason I'm telling you this is so that you can understand the what goes on in the rut, okay? Because it's going to go on on your property, wherever the main doe activity is, the buck is going to be downwind of that most of the time. Okay, you see this? Say this is a field here, okay? This here is a field, and we have this time. We're going to say we have a, just for easiness because of the way it's set up, we're going to say we have a, a north easterly wind, north, north northeast wind, okay? And it's blowing across this field like this and blowing back into this area, okay? Well, what happens a lot of times, you may have does that come out and they'll feed out here, and some guy sees that and he says, well, I can hunt the edge of this field, and I get on the downwind side on the edge of the field, and then when the buck comes out to check these does I'll uh, you know take the shot and, and kill him and sometimes it works but most of the time it doesn't work because the buck circles you know 60 70 yards downwind on his way through and he actually wins the dang guy right in here doesn't blow or nothing he just he goes back his other way turns goes out this way or whatever goes on about his business so that's what you're gonna have going on on this um, property, you're going to have, but you know, deer bedding on the edge of the swamps and the edge of these thick, these thick pine areas. Um, you know, you're going to have them bedding on the edge, and you're going to have bucks coming down that downwind side. So, you know, if you're bow hunting, obviously it makes it more difficult because you have to get close into range. Okay, if you're gun hunting, you can back off a little bit, so you can actually back off. 60, 70, 80, 90, sometimes even 100 yards from being downwind, and then the buck goes in between you and that bedding area on the downwind side of, of the food area or the bedding area or whatever. So depending on how you are, if you're bow hunting, obviously you got to tighten up. If you're bow hunting the rut, if you're bow hunting early season and then gun hunting the rut, then you got it a pretty good situation here because... When you're bow hunting early, you're hunting food to bed, food to bed, food to bed, okay? And your deer are feeding all out in these areas, okay? They're feeding out in this clear cut at night. Um, they're feeding in these stripped areas. Probably this may be a little thicker. Um, they may be bedding in here a lot. They may be bedding, you know, in this area, these areas. And uh, <clears throat> so them are... But your bed to food, and then your edge is working right on your edges and stuff. As them deer come out and hit them edges and stuff, it's going to work real great. Also, the edges are going to work real great during your gun season. But let's just say, for instance, we've got a north wind, or pretty close to a north wind, okay? So we want to be on the down. We've got a lot of deer, a does bedding in this area. And we know that because we've been watching them early bow season going in and out of there, and, and we haven't got a shot at them or whatever. Maybe you were hunting here and you've noticed a lot of does coming from that area in the uh, evening. Okay, whatever the reason, you're, you're pretty well confident this is a bedding area and you have a north wind. So then, in that case, you can hunt, you know, something down wind, down range. If it's gun season, you can get 100 yards down um, from the edge, okay? Because the buck, he's usually going to travel, you know, 20 in, on the edge to probably 80 yards out and that would actually keep you downwind of his route because this is his this is the area he's going to come he may come this way this way but it's going to be multiple bucks doing this if it's in the seeking phase and then the chasing phase okay and that gives you then the same thing here so on this property as far as stand locations you have multiple um, stand locations that you could have. You've got the ones that I showed you, and this one more area that I would want to um, really look at on this property. I can't get the, is this this area right here. This old logging road that runs up in the middle of this. Okay, and it looks like it comes down from here. And drops down 
and I don't know how your access, if you can access, okay, I know you're a lease of this entire club, okay, and I know it's a huge, huge area, and I know that this is actually your area, but I don't know if you, if you can access one of your stands from some of these, you know, from someone else's area, that would be great for some of your stands in certain wind directions and stuff. Uh, maybe you could access this stand here or something like that. But you could you could still access it from yours. You just set your GPS, get you a way in there, um, depending on how thick this is. But that that open area inside there look interests me um, because you may have a lot of deer activity inside that. Um, you know, walking up and down that road, especially during the rut. Okay, because bucks will use them that easy access he'll use this edge feature here to scent check this area if the wind's right and he'll do it to scent check this area if the wind's right that's why and he and then he'll use this area this edge feature to scent check this area with a you know wind like this with a wind like that he'll scent check this area from these and that's what makes these points where they all come together so interesting because he'll cut through to sit check this or he'll cut through to get up here but then this inside he'll do the same thing he'll cut down that because it's easy it's the easiest route for him to to travel to sit as he's on his way looking for does from one doe group to the next doe group to the next doe group um, and I hope that makes a lot of sense to you on this property here um, you know as far as just say there's a funnel here and a funnel there I showed you some sort of funnels if you want to call them funnels um, I kind of call them funnels because they are funnels they're funneling the deer by path of least resistance okay if that makes sense to you and when you have that's what this little old edge here is or old road or whatever that is this edge here is is the path of least resistance okay path of least resistance and you have three of them that come together in one spot right there this edge feature here path of least resistance this edge feature here path of least resistance and then obviously this one here you have three funnels of path of least resistance coming together in one spot same thing here path of least resistance path of least resistance down the road path of least resistance on the edge path of least resistance on this edge you've got multiple path of least resistance funnels coming together okay same thing here okay Pro I know I've done went over them so not, there's no reason to keep going over them but you've got multiple sort of funnels coming together in them areas okay this area here is where you actually kind of have a bend deer coming here hit that path of least resistance boom you get the shot here so there's multiple stand locations um, that you can that I can pinpoint on aerial photo on this property okay and I hope that that this this helps you if you have any questions send me an email I'll be glad to uh, answer any questions or anything I appreciate you purchasing the, uh, the video package and I hope you enjoy it um, and like I said if you have any questions Tim uh, feel free to email me and I'll be glad to answer your questions. I uh, may even give you a call. Um, if you need me to call you, you, you send me an email and I'll, I'll call you. Um, you know, if you have any questions that you might want to ask and, and I'll help you out here. But I think the, the stands that you do have are uh, pretty sound locations. But I think there was a few that you, that you might want to check out these areas. Now, like I say all the time, I mean, you look at something from Aero Photo. Um, some of them are not going to, when you get in there and look at it, it's not going to be what it looks like on aerial photo. But out of out of these multiple spots, you've got one, two, three uh, spots here that there's a lot of edge features coming together that you, now obviously you've seen these, this, you've seen this spot here, um, you've seen that spot, this spot, and this spot. So you've got, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six areas, out of them six areas, at least three or four of them are going to, uh, or maybe probably even five of them are going to be 
good spots and you may have to adjust a little bit maybe the best spot to actually set may be back in here a little bit or or here you know you, you have to actually get in and walk it and, and see that but them are the them are the areas that I would definitely get in and check out hope you enjoyed the video hope everyone else that's seen it enjoyed it I appreciate you Tim and like I said if you have any questions get a hold of me and and I'll help you out best I can man I appreciate you bye bye